Actually, you said that uh, at school you had these teachers, uh, and you 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 grew up in New Jersey, right? And that was public school or private school? Uh, because public, but public, public, public school. Yeah. So. My my guess is you kind of were lucky with good teachers, or that was at that specific school was, was something a little bit different. No, it was an average sort of small town school. Uh, I guess I was lucky with good teachers. I mean, one of the, uh, in fact, I mean, it was, I had some really creative teachers. I mean, Estonia's digitization is uh, exists thanks to my. 10th grade math teacher. Wow. Because in 10th grade, this is 1971. And she said, and she was doing her PhD in math education. And she said, I, I want to do this. I want to see if I can teach kids to program or to code. 71. Wow. Okay. And then she uh, rented a teletype machine with a perfo tape. Connect, I mean, it's where writing programs and then a big telephone modem and you stick a telephone into it and it was connected to a mainframe computer 50 kilometers away and i learned to program and later on when i went to the university i i found a job doing working in a lab programming a computer i mean and when i had that job it was a, it was called it was a computer it was a pdp8 and the reason it was called a PDP-8, and then it was about, I mean, it was like a, a meter long and 80 centimeters deep and 30 kilometer, um, 30 centimeters high. The reason it was called a PDP-8 is that it had 8K of memory, which is the size of an empty email today. So you had to program in in assembler language, which is... It's just, it's a hexadecimal, six, base 16. So all the commands are either, I mean, a combination of letters and numbers of zero through nine and A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So I learned that. I've never used it since, but after that, I never worried about tech. Now, 25 years after that, 22 years after that. Anyway, 1993, I was, um, you know, we were all in a mess in 1993, very poor, backwards, all these problems we had. Um, 19, uh, I mean, 1938, Latvia was richer than Estonia, and Estonia in GDP per capita was richer than Finland. In 1992, the first year of a full year of, I mean, in 1938, because it was the last full year before the war, in 1992, the first full year of independence, the GDP per capita of Estonia was $2,800. The GDP per capita of Finland was 24,000 US dollars. So they were eight times richer than we were. Now we're in bad shape. And I said, well, how are we ever going to catch up? And we're not gonna, I mean, it's like, it's Zeno's paradox with, you know, Achilles rat running after the tortoise. I mean, even if a country grows just a little bit and we grow a lot, we still won't catch up. So, yeah. And then uh, the other thing that happened was um, 1993, the first web browser ever came out. It was called Mosaic. You had to go buy it. You now we download these browsers, but then you had to go to a store. Twenty nine ninety five at a at Radio Shack, a store, and you got seven floppy disks, and you had to upload the floppy disks, and then you had a web browser. And I look, and I did that, of course, because I'd always been kind of geeky after high school. And I looked at this, I said, wow, this is amazing. Not because the web is amazing, but it's amazing also because this is the one place where we can, we're all starting out on a level playing field. That is, US, Japan, Estonia, we're all there in the beginning of something. And I did, my gut said, this is going to be big. And so my first conclusion was we have to go digital. Estonia has to go digital. We can start in, we won't be, I mean, we're behind in hospitals, roads, 
telephones, everything were way behind. But this is the one place where we we're we're starting off at you know the ground floor. And then the next question is, how do you do this? I said, well, the way to really do it is you start with the kids. So what we do, so my proposal in 1994-95 was to um, put computers in every school in Estonia and connect all of the schools. I mean, it was not an easy thing to do, but unfortunately for a short time, Estonia had a minister of education who also had a PhD in astrophysics. So he said, oh, that's a good idea. And so, I mean, I was not in, I was a diplomat. I was not in government, but he was the minister. And he said, well, we have this idea. Let's put computers in all the schools. The government said, okay. And that's how by 19, well, it started in 1996 as an official government program. And by 1998, all Estonian schools were online. And how that affected the future was that in, 19, in 2015, 2016, when I was ending my term, I would visit startups. I'd visit, we have a lot of startups and I would go visit them and I would ask people. So, and these were all men and women like late 20s, early 30s. So I'd say, how did you get involved in doing a tech startup? And I'd say almost every single one of them said, Oh, I was a kid in your program when I was 15. So the point of all of that is that you have to think ahead. It takes time to change things. But if I hadn't had that teacher in 1971, who had this crazy idea, at that time, a completely crazy idea, um, I would not have had my crazy idea. I mean, I have to admit, a lot of people thought it was a very crazy idea. I mean, what are you doing? You're going to destroy the great Estonian language. People won't be learning Estonian. We're all going to be like, they had, I, had a, I mean, for an entire year after I proposed this, uh, our teachers, teachers union weekly newspaper, I mean, every week, it was, you know, sort of like crappy Soviet style newspaper. It's like, you know. But uh, every week, there would be at least one article saying how stupid I was and how I was going to destroy the national culture by destroying the language and destroying education. So every week, I'd say, what do they say this week? And after a while, it died down. But the point is that it was not popular, but the kids loved it. And then the kids get older, and then they're adults, and then they're they're all richer than I am. <laughs> So, by the way, congratulations, you now have 10th uh, unicorn as yeah. one of the side effects, right? One of the wonderful side effects of that. Well, but, but, I mean, all of those kids, I mean, all the people who are doing it started out originally in this program mm. in the, in the mid-1990s. Actually, Almost uh, all, not yeah. every single one, but most of them. But by the way, what's the, what's the name of teacher, of your teacher uh, at New Jersey? Well, we called her Mrs. Cummings. I don't know. She's Christine Cummings. I mean, she's she's in her late eighties now. She's okay. still alive. Uh, and imagine, so for example, you t you helped to train these digital muscles, right, for those kids, and those muscles just kind of got stronger. And what what came out of that, right? So I I just can can imagine if we could just uh, add to this uh, educational process, this critical thinking, and all these life skills that we need, communication, for example, and all that stuff. What could be possibly um, achievable? Because this is such an inspirational story, uh, Mr. Elvis. This is such an inspirational uh, story. Thank you.